Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I want to do two things. The first one, I want to tell you the exact release date for iOS 12, and also I want to show you some of the most exciting features of the iOS 12 once it lands on your iPhone. So let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so the first thing, iOS 12 is going to be available September 17 on the following iOS devices. As you can see, the full list is provided by Apple. So that's the release date, September 17, it's almost here. Now, let's take a look at all the new features on iOS 12 that you are going to love. Let's start with the first one. One of the major features that everybody has been waiting for is the group notifications in the notifications panel. So if you drop down the notifications panel over here, uh, you'll see that now I just sent myself six messages from my other phone and they're all grouped together into this one block uh, of messages notifications and the same is applicable to the to the YouTube studio app over here uh, it's they're all grouped together the same is happening over here with the YouTube app and the news app as you can see so what you can do with these guys is you can tap on them and that expands all the messages you can see them individually one by one you can scroll down uh, you can individually deal with them one by one if you so desire or uh, you can tap show less again and then you can actually uh, deal with them as a group. If you swipe to this side, you have all the regular options, manage, view, clear. So let's push them back over here one more time. I'm gonna show you, uh, as you can see, you can do the same thing with these guys. So if I tap on the YouTube Studio notifications, if I tap it, you'll see all the notifications I'm getting on the YouTube Studio uh, grouped together, but they also, they're also expandable. And again, I can uh, deal with them individually, one by one, as you can see. So tap show less. And I'm going to show you one more thing. If you swipe over one more time, whether you do this as a group or an individual, it's the same thing. Uh, you can tap on manage and this gives you the manage notifications option. So you can either choose these to be delivered quietly to you, meaning they will bypass the lock screen and they'll go straight into the actual uh, notifications panel. So you will not see messages on the lock screen anymore, but you will see them when you pull down the notifications panel or you can simply turn them off right from here. And uh, if you do that, you will not see that notification at all. So those are the notification enhancements that you can expect to see on iOS 12 when you get it later. And then of course you can tap on this guy or the cancel to cancel it or go to settings. If you wanna go into the detail settings, you can go right there. And this is just a regular screen that we know uh, how to use. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the performance. Apple is saying they're gonna make some tweaks to their operating system. So when you launch an application, it's going to launch faster. And I can tell you right now, uh, I was running iOS 11 right before this and I just did the upgrade. So when I do tap the weather application, it, it does launch much quicker than the iOS 11 version. One more thing they did was they added some new tab into the news application. So if you use the news application a lot, and if you look at the bottom, uh, if you have iOS 12 right now, you'll see that uh, you're not going to see this uh, tab over here. This is the browse tab, which makes it easier for you to browse through the news. So if I tap on browse, it gives me the full categories. Uh, and I, of course, as usual, I can go and I can edit these categories by tapping that edit button. So I can curate the browse feature to my own needs. So let's click done over here and let's go back out. So that's the only update they have in the news application. Now, before I move into the actual and emoji enhancements, I'm gonna show you one more thing. The stocks application has been updated as well. So if I go to stocks now, uh, you'll see a new setup. On the top, you have the stocks. At the bottom, you have stories relating to the stock. So this is fed from the news application, but it is in fact stories relating to actual stocks. I can pull this up if I wanted to, to read the actual news or just pull it down. Now, if I do pull this up, the stocks go up here and they actually uh, move from side to side, which is a nice little uh, animation. And if I pull it down, I can see the stocks. And if I tap on individual stocks, I can get much more detail now than I used to be able to get with the old useless stock application. So I can tap things, I can see the uh, performance of this stock in a month, in three months, six months, all the way up to a year. All right, now let's move on to the enhancements that we can expect on the Animoji and also something called Memoji that allows you to create your own Animoji. 
So let me go into my text messages, and if I tap over here, and I, if I tap on the App Store icon, you'll see the an emoji icon. If I tap on this guy, uh, first and foremost, I want to show you guys that we have four new an emojis. Uh, we have this one over here. Uh, we have this one, the T-Rex. Uh, we have this koala one, and of course, we have this one over here. And I'm not going to show you my face, but basically, uh, this these new ones are going to give you even more ways to interact with your friends or whatever you want to do with the emojis. Uh, but it does now also recognize the actual tongue movement. Now, let me show you what that looks like really quickly. So here's an, an emoji I recorded right here. So if I tap on this guy, it's going to expand. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you the things it can do. So uh, there we go. The tongue can now be shown in your an emojis if that's your thing. All righty. Uh, nothing that impresses me, but some people might actually like this. So an emojis are now, in fact, more advanced than before. But on top of that, if I go back here and if I expand this thing, you'll see that there's a new option on the top that says plus. This actually allows you to add a new an emoji that you create. It is called me emoji. So if I click plus, you get this entire playground. Uh, from here, you can pick a skin color if you want. As you can see, any skin color that you want. Uh, after you uh, pick a skin color, you can actually pick if you want to add freckles on the screen, uh, on the face or not, just like that. And then you can swipe over, go to the hairstyle, and pick all these different hairstyles as you desire. So there we go. And then you can go over, you can do the head shape. You have all these different options. And as you play with these guys, you see a real time reflection right over here. And let's go for the eyes. So you can pick what kind of eyes you want. You can pick what kind of brows you want, anything that you want, nose and lips, uh, ears, small ones, big ones, humongous ones, whatever you need. Uh, facial hair if you want any as you can see uh, you can add sunglasses too or regular glasses so let's uh, add anything over here and then you have the headwear I can add a hat and then uh, the color for the hat and all this good stuff then you click done and you have your own an emoji created right on the spot that you can use uh, it'll, it'll show up right here so you don't have to just make one you can make several personalized an emojis or memojis as you please okay if you tap this you can edit this you can duplicate this or you can remove this uh, click done and that is the new features and enhancements you'll find on an emoji side okay so next up let's go to the settings and over here you're gonna see a new menu item called the screen time uh, this is a pretty cool little um, uh, interface it tells you how much time you're spending on your phone in relation to apps and then it makes you uh, suggestions for you to chill out so basically if you are playing games for too long this is going to actually advise you uh, that you are playing games for two hours or two more hours a day and it might even allow you to limit your activity with that one single app so if I tap on this guy it'll give you a breakdown it's, it's saying that today uh, I have been using settings messages uh, measure uh, app, new stocks, whatever, and gives you a little graphical chart on that so you have an idea of what you've been doing. Uh, of course, because I just updated this today, this is all I'm going to see. If I go to the last seven days, it, it'll, it'll also give me a, a summary, but it's going to only based on today. Now, if I go back to screen time, I can do several things over here. I can do downtime. So this allows you to set a schedule so I can spend time away from the actual screen. So if you're overusing your iPhone and the phone gives you an alert, you can go and you can schedule a downtime so you don't spend as much time with the iPhone and you can do other things in life that might be more important. So Apple is now giving you these options. They also allow you to set the app limits. So if I tap on the app limits, as you can see, I can tap on add limit. Uh, I can pick games. I can click add and I can say that I only want to be able to play games on my phone 20 minutes a day so if I um, uh, go back here the games it says 20 minutes so if I play games more than 20 minutes it's gonna disable the game it's gonna send me a notification or something along that line and of course you can add uh, apps into always allowed which is pretty great 
So if there's an app that you just have to use at all times, such as the phone, messages, or FaceTime, because communication is important, you can put them into allowed apps. And of course, you can do more down here. This is also a very nice customizable interface. And of course, there's a bunch of other things over here that are probably very easy to understand once you get down to using this thing. Now, the next thing that is really, really cool, something that I'm not going to be able to show you guys here, has to do with CarPlay. Now, this is a feature that I've really been waiting for. Uh, now, what's going to happen is you are able to uh, go and use CarPlay uh, with apps like Google Maps, which is fantastic. So if I attach this iPhone to my car with iOS 12, uh, normally I can only use uh, the uh, Apple Maps, which are not as accurate as Google Maps. But now with this update, Google Maps is in fact supported. That is pretty damn awesome. So those are the things I want to highlight in iOS 12. Uh, for now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, just drop them down below. And of course, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. If you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, follow me on all at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day.